major breakout for him. Connor Halifax, look at the season he has had. Joining us now, the man in the crease for the Winnipeg Jets, Connor Hellebach. Connor, thanks for taking the time, and you're headed to the All-Star game in Tampa. Connor Hellebach, NHL All-Star. How does that feel? You know, it feels pretty good, but uh, I'm not the only one enjoying it. Uh, my family and my friends are all enjoying it, too. We, uh, we all live together through this, and uh, we're going to go down there and have a wonderful weekend. Well, you certainly earned it, and very deserving of it, Connor Weeksy here. Uh, let's talk about that. Growing up in Michigan, and, you know, I had a lot of time spent in Michigan being a Toronto kid, playing youth hockey against teams there, but take us through what that was like. Were you a Red Wing guy? Who was your favorite <laughs> goalie? Who had the coolest mask? Take us through young Connor and what got you into the position. Yeah, okay, so uh, I was a big Red Wings fan. Okay. Uh, my uncle had season tickets. Um, very, uh, they're all the way against the wall, around the red line. Nice. You can see the whole game. I love that the most. I've seen everything. You can see the plays happen. Um, I grew up, I liked Hasek. Um, I really liked Osgood. Mm -hmm. I felt like he played a very good role in, in those teams. And um, my favorite goalie was Ole Kolzig. Um, I remember nice. the, the, the 98 playoffs. Yep. Um, the Wings played them, and he was a big reason they were in the finals. And they call him Godzilla. I, this is something about him when I was younger. I really liked him. And um, so we played some youth hockey and then some high school hockey. And... Um, then I start traveling around after that. Awesome. You know, you know, you mentioned that you get traveling around because you're one of those guys that uh, you kind of burst on to the scene in 2012, your draft year. You end up getting drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. What was that like? There's been a lot of good goalies that have come out of that draft. What was that like that year as you were trying to just find your way as a young guy, as a draft eligible? You know, I wasn't even thinking about NHL or being drafted in the NHL. Um, Coming out of high school, I didn't really know exactly where I was going to play because I didn't get drafted in the USHL and I didn't get drafted in the NA. And I thought I might have been drafted in the USHL, but it never happened. So, um, so I worked all summer long, and I knew I had to work twice as hard because I would need to earn my, my role and earn a spot on a team. So I went to a main camp for Odessa all the way out in Minnesota, drove down there by myself. It's about 12 hours. And I worked really hard that week, and I made the team. And... Then uh, the season starts going, and I had Joe Clark there in a really good organization that really helped me succeed. And uh, the team was pretty good around me, too. And um, come December time, little did I know, I had some schools looking at me, and that was all new for me, too. Um, and then I ended up uh, going to my first offer at UMass Lowell, which I thought was a perfect place for me to go anyways. Um, and then all of a sudden, I start getting these NHL calls, and the guys wanted a little bit of an interview, and uh, they come and watch a game here and there, and that's when it kind of whirlwind into my face, and I didn't really know exactly the route or how things were going to go. And things are just kind of falling into place. Connor, I'm shaking my head here in the studio because this is an incredible story, and as a lot of the boys and girls are going to be coming home from school and some of the young youth players that play the game, they're going to be tuning into this after school and hearing what you have to say. That shows a lot of perseverance, a lot of dedication. Take us through your mindset during some of that time and how you were able to not only believe in yourself and put in the work ethic, but also have the mental toughness to be able to get your th yourself through some of the uncertainties. Okay, well, in high school, um, I had my brother who was going through kind of the same route, and he worked very hard in the summer, too. So I had that to look forward to. So I kind of knew what I needed to do if I want to make the next level. And then when I didn't get drafted in the NA or the USHL, I had that moment of, shoot, what do I do now? And then it was maybe an hour after that whole happened. I, I sat down and said, well, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to make it work. No matter where I have to go, what I have to do, I'm going to make it work. And I got right to it the next day. I started practicing and working hard. And well, just watching the game as much as I did, I, I kind of understood what I liked in the goalies. So what I like seeing from goalies and their calmness and they're, they're smooth and how they move and I started working on those kind of things and I wasn't going to take no for an answer. Well, you love hearing that kind of story and that is, as Kevin points out, that's terrific stuff for 
for young kids watching. You know, last year was a tough year for the for the Jets. It was a tough year for you as uh, you know the team struggled a little bit. This year, obviously, it's been much different. Who are the guys in the off season that you worked with? What are some of the things that you focused on to be better this year? Oh, I got a new strength coach, um, Adam Francilia. He kind of taught me how the goalie actually does move. So you can watch all these guys, watch all this film, but understanding how the body works, what there's a whole new meaning and a whole new level. Um, being able to understand how the goalie moves now, I can start training like that. And then I would go out to Kelowna, and then we'd go actually go on the ice, and he would show me, he'd take a talent and show me how the goalie moves, what muscles he's using, and, and the whole technique of it. So now I have a good foundation. So now I can take that and take I mean, last year, yeah, I'd say it was bad, but I got a ton better. Wade Flaherty here is unbelievable goalie coach, and we were working every single day, and I could feel myself improving every single day. So now I take that improvement, put it with my new foundation, and I think, well, the team's obviously playing really good for me too. So with that, I think things are starting to finally succeed. Connor, I love students of the game, and I always tell kids, if you want to get somewhere in this great game, you've got to be a rink rat, you've got to be a student, you've been all of those things. Listen, I'm going to go back to last year to touch on EJ's point. I remember you guys coming into Madison Square Garden. I was standing up in the corner watching you. It was a tough one. The guys didn't give you any help. It was a tough game here. But I watched and I said, man, this guy's got a ton of stuff going for him. I love what he has. I love his package and, and everything that he has going for him. Once he puts it together, look out. I spoke to your goalie coach, Wade Flaherty, and now I'm watching you. Your torso is more upright. You're playing big. You look like Ole Kolzig. Like you, and you're wearing number 37. It, it just seems your points have all come through. Uh, I know that you also made some tweaks in the offseason, not only your training, but take us through some of the tweaks that you and Wade Flaherty worked on and, and go ahead and tell the crowd about that. I'm interested to hear you say that. Yeah, well, you know, it does take a little bit of failure to finally figure out the next level, the next step. So you can't be afraid of a little failure. Um, it's going to help you take the next step, but for the, the goal team specifically, uh, it was more of the post work that proved a ton and being always in control, never out of a, out of a play. And, um, really keeping the body tight and keeping the hands there and the tracking and the glove position, that actually was a big thing that Flats got on me about. Um, getting back to the actual, the little that I always describe it as is the trajectory of the puck going into the net getting back to where the, the hand actually needs to be to, to give you the best opportunity to go up or down, you know. And so that was a big thing. The pull circle was huge. And just the whole crease movement and staying smooth. Uh, Flats worked so much about the movement, making sure I am calm and always in position. Connor, before I let you go, I got to ask you, how's that eye? Because I don't like seeing goalies with black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a crazy one in my books. So. I wouldn't expect it, and I definitely wouldn't expect it from my own teammate, but that's just how hot he goes. <laughs> Connor. Well, take care of yourself, buddy. Yeah. All the best at the All-Star Game coming up. Looking forward to seeing you down in Tampa. Thank you. I look forward to it as well. Still ahead, who 